Uh, I want to thank the guys out here, Santosh, everyone from Get Off Your Ass, from MTM, from everyone that's put this together. I can't tell you how excited I was to be here. Uh, I rode all the way from Bombay to try and come here last night. But then my lights went out, and riding in India without lights is not a good idea. I don't know if you guys have tried it, but just don't. Um, so anyway, uh, hi guys, I'm Abhinash. Uh, thanks for being here. I can't tell you, I mean, this is, this is very, very exciting for me because being around motorcyclists, being around people that have passions and interests, to me is basically why I like motorcycles, right? I, it's not, uh, it started out because it was cool. It actually started out because I saw Top Gun at the age of 10, and I was like, <laughs> it's true. And I was like, wow, he is so cool. He rides the bike and gets the girl. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so uh, Top Gun, and, and, and that's, that's when it started. And then when I was 20 or 21, I made enough money to buy my first bike. Uh, my mother wasn't happy, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, and then uh, I've been riding ever since. So today I'm going to talk a bit about South America. Uh, South America. I think Bhardwaj did an awesome job about Brad uh, uh, He was so good. Um, I, I think he, he told you, he gave you guys all the information about what you need to do, like how difficult it is. I mean, I could relate to 99.9% .9 of the things he said, you know, with the customs agents and they're, they're idiots, right? Uh, they, they are, and, and I was telling someone on the way here, uh, I got into Argentina because of an iPhone app. I mean, we were exchanging comments on an iPhone app, um, and, and that's how he finally let me in. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to not talk about that stuff because I think I, there's nothing more I can say. I think whatever Bharadwaj said was absolutely right. Uh, everyone asked, you know, how much, is, how much do trips like this cost? Do you get sponsors? I didn't get any sponsors. I, I did it myself. Uh, it was a little easier for me because I was living in the States, I was working there, uh, and, and um, I said, you know, this is it, I'm going to come back to India, and then before I come back to India, I said, I'm going to do what I've been dreaming to do for the last 10 years. So I'm going to talk to you about South America, and uh, actually I'm going to talk to you a bit about how incredible this place is, and how nice, how incredible they think us Indians are, and how easy it is to do it, actually. It's not as tough as you might think. So if you guys are going to do it, all you have to do is start. Right? It's, it's the crossing of the Rubicon, uh, which one one class that I paid attention to, I remember from in history. Uh, once you do that first step, then it's just a matter of time, right? Unlike Bharatwaj, who probably spent two years planning, I spent two months, right? Because um, I'm, I'm useless like that. But uh, I paid the price for it because all throughout I was like, oh God, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know how to change a tire. So I, I'm upset that I missed the workshop because I want to learn some of those things. I mean, I learned a lot of it on, on my own on the way, but I didn't know that much. I, you know, I'm around motorcycle guys and they're all like, oh, and this part and that part and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, cool. Like, I have no idea what they're talking about. Because, uh, you know, some guys are like really into their bikes and machines and I'm, I, I, just, I just like to ride. Yeah? So, you know, when stuff goes wrong and you're in the middle of the Bolivian salt flats and there's no one for a thousand miles, then, then you know, you've got to figure it out. There's no Google either. Um, so anyway, so uh, coming back to South America, so I, this, this picture, I had this, uh, basically when I was 20 or 21, uh, I, was, uh, I was an international student then, and I was sitting with a friend from Mexico, I, we, I was in college in America, and um, he showed me a map and he said, uh, you know, there's one road that goes from the top of America to the bottom of Argentina, it's called the Panamericana. I said, wow, that's awesome. There's one road. He said, yeah, it's a very, very legendary road. And he's been on it a bit on a bus. And so I said, how cool would it be to do that? Uh, he said, how cool would it be to do the whole thing? I said, yes, I'm going to do it, but on a motorcycle. Um, and then it just stuck in my head, right? So for the next 10 years, any time I, anybody I knew would, I'd talk my ear off about, you know, talk their ear off about my trip to South America and, and doing the Panamericana. And I bought motorcycles, I rode them all over America, I went rode them through Central America, but this was the dream, right? I always wanted to do this, and I always had this picture with me everywhere I went. Every office, every house, every apartment was printed out and put there, uh, because it was just a reminder to me as to what I really wanted to do. And uh, so I think that's a really good thing if you, uh, to, to do something like that, to have something like that, because it just reinforces it. And then. The stars were aligned, I had a little bit of money, I uh, had a little bit of time, so I said, I'm just going to do it. And it started by buying that motorcycle that's outside. I, I brought it here because usually that's more entertaining than me. And, and when, when I bring that bike, everyone just looks at it and says, like, oh my god, wow, that's incredible. 
So I bought that bike, and when I bought that bike, when I finally transferred the guy the money, I was like, oh my god, I'm doing this. And that was in September, and then I left on, on October. Uh, the next two months were just about getting visas. I actually didn't go around telling them I was going on a motorcycle. I made some elaborate itinerary, which is totally fake. Like I'm flying from country to country. So they didn't know I was going by motorcycle. They just thought I was flying, so they gave me the visas, and you know, I got lucky that way. But the visas are a pain if you're Indian. It's, it's a problem. So, okay, so I'm going to take you through some pictures. I'm going to show you a bit of my journey and uh, show you how incredible this place is and uh, hopefully inspire you guys to, you know, do a ride yourself. Uh, this, that's, uh, you can't really see that. This is, uh, someone who works with me uh, made, made that picture. So, if you can see, that's me when I finished my trip. Uh, so, when I started, uh, I, I looked like this. Thanks. I got one. Good. <laughs> but was 20, I'll be one. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay, so when I started my trip, I looked like me. And then when I ended, I looked like that. Right? My mother so much like, oh my god, what has happened? Um, and then immediately I had to shave, like, shortly afterwards. But uh, Che Guevara was a big inspiration for me, and uh, it really happened. I didn't know much about him, but then Motorcycle Diaries came out in 2004, 2003, and I was like, wow, this is incredible. And then I learned about him, I read a lot about him, and I went to Cuba and I followed up on him. Uh, and you know, I got really into it and, and I, you know, I, I was very excited by the rebellious nature of things. So this journey I said I'm going to do it in reverse of what he did it, so I could try and you know, go back to how he started and how he ended. But the, basically I wanted to write, that's it. Okay. So this is when I started, uh, this is all my stuff, like I said I did, I did plan much. I, I just I got some oil, you know, that I carried, few spare parts, few clothes, tent. That's my tent, which is the most amazing tent in the world. It's got a it's got a garage for your bike. It's awesome. <laughs> it's so cool, I can't tell you, I love it. Um, it's it's really cool. That uh, luggage, if uh, I'll show you guys my luggage. If you ever get a chance, Wolfman luggage, it's the best. I mean it's I don't have steel panniers like most people do. These are like bags, they're made out of rubber and they're totally waterproof. So I've been completely underwater, my bike's been underwater, it's, and nothing's happened. So that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, so this is all my stuff before I left. I, of course, all of you have read Jupiter's Travels, I assume. Or some of you have read it, know about Ted Simon. I read the book too, I was very inspired. And in there, one of the first pictures is him with his stuff, so I was like, I have to do the same. Uh, Okay, so uh, this here is, uh, th this is Colombia. So my plan was to fly my bike from Miami to Bogota, take it out of customs in Bogota and just head south. I had no route planned, I had no, nothing planned. I just had visas for a certain amount of time and I said, I had a Lonely Planet, which was my guide, Lonely Planet and a rough guide. Both of them were great, I lived off of them. And I said, I'm just gonna go wherever the wind takes me, right? I, I just wanted to, in four months, get it there del fuego, that, that, uh, which is the tip of South America and Argentina. That was my, my dream, right? Uh, so this is, a funny story here, is that uh, when I was on the plane leaving Miami, I had nothing but my little tank bag with my papers and passport, everything was on the bike in a crate being flown to Bogota and just when I'm you know like taking off I call the guy to just make sure that my bike's on the plane he said oh sorry there's a problem it'll reset three days later I was like <laughs> <laughs> so and then you know the air was like so put your phone down so I was like great so off I go to Bogota I have nothing it's cold I didn't think of it like oh my god it's gonna be cold I had one shirt a uh, pair of jeans and and I'm in Bogota and, and I went to a hostel and you know made friends with a Cuban guy and so sweet he gave me some of his clothes. <laughs> you know, I was really cold, yeah. And uh, after, <laughs> after three days, um, I finally go to the airport to find out, you know, I said, where's my bloody bike? I, guys from Miami were just useless. They were really useless. And they, when I get to the airport and I get to the uh, shipping agents and they said, your bike's been here for three days. I was like, mother. <laughs> so, so I was sitting there, idiots. So then I quickly got my bike out of there. You know, luckily I got it out very quickly, surprisingly. I mean, it got out in, in like two or three hours because they had never seen an Indian. They had never seen a bike like this. They were just so excited. And, and they didn't know that Indians actually, you know, did anything but this. <laughs> so, yeah, so they were shocked, you know, and, and what, what was really nice, uh, I think Bhagavad touched on this as well, is that uh, 
you know, I mean, the perception is that Indians, uh, like especially in America or UK, we just go there to work, you know, they're workers and stuff. But anywhere else in the world, like South America, and I've lived in America for 10 years, right? So I, I know all about that. Uh, but in South America, everywhere I went, and I told someone I was Indian, they were like, oh, Indian, wow, so beautiful, it's so amazing, I've always dreamt about going to India, you're so lucky, you live in a magical land. I was like, come see the back of my house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, but I mean, they think it's like, it's like Alibaba land, you know, it's like, uh, it's, they think it's the most amazing place. And it is, I mean, I, to be honest, after finishing that ride, I couldn't wait to get back home because I gained so much more appreciation for home. Uh, I, I just because being in America, it's a different world, right? But being anywhere else, you can relate so much to what their way of life and our way of life. And I learned so much from them. But what I learned the most is I'm I'm here. Like this is me, and I really like it, and I, and I like that about me. So that that was nice for me. Oh, sorry, I didn't talk about that. Um, but that that was that was a waterfall in Colombia when I finally. <laughs> finally <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I finally got my bike out of customs, I rode like crazy. First day, right? First, oh, just like Bhatwaj, I had never ridden this bike before. And it's a beast, okay? I mean, I had never ridden a KTM before. But after watching a uh, long, long way around, when they loved the KTMs but didn't get it, I said, that's the bike I want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, so I bought this one because I, I read and I spoke to people and, and they said that this is the meanest monster out there, you know? So it's great. I bought it my feet when I sit on it, barely touch, my toes barely touch the ground. It's really hard. So I was like, oh God, you know, what am I doing in this other country? No idea. All this luggage on, like no idea what I'm going to do. Anyway, managed first day, we go, I, I was coming up a mountain and out of Bogota, raining like hell. Uh, someone braked in front of me, I braked, just boom, head down. Day one, right? Came here, scraped the entire side of me, came down the mountain, I was like, oh my god, what's going to happen, you know, there's blood all over, I was, and this bike, I, I don't know how heavy it is, but it's massive, it's a 42 litre petrol tank, wow. okay, wow. that that in itself is massive, and the rest of it is, is really heavy, so I don't know how, and there's no way I can lift it up, so for half an hour I'm lying there, the bike's on top of me, I said, what am I doing here, you know, just like Bhatwa, here's a skinny little brown boy in <laughs> Colombia, like, what the hell am I doing? I should be at home eating my mother's chapatis or something. Uh, but you know, I'm glad that happened on day one because after that, once I got past that, and you know, you have, there's nothing you can do. There's no one around. You got someone finally came, lifted up the bike. Uh, I got on it and just kept going. You have no choice. And then at night, I got to a town. I checked into a hotel. Uh, I think one of the few times I did. I cleaned myself up and I was shaking. And I said, "What am I going to do? This is day one of like day 120." You know. Uh, but the next morning I bandaged up and I couldn't wait to get back on the bike because the bike was so much fun. I was like, oh, I want to be here and I couldn't believe I was in this foreign land, you know, this beautiful Latin land with incredibly beautiful Latin women. And I was like, this is wild. <laughs> so, okay, now I'm going to go faster. <laughs> uh, so, they're incredibly beautiful, by the way. It's ridiculous. So, this here, uh, this is, this is, I forget the name of the town, uh, but basically when I got here, uh, Colombia, uh, you come down the Pacific coast, everything is great, right? Colombia has had lots of problems with, uh, with the FARC, the Revolutionary Army, and, and kidnapping and all of this for years, and they're just coming out of it. So everyone is just like, they're celebrating life, you know, and there's such positivity, it's amazing. But I was going from town to town, from Bogota to Cali to... You know, and I said I, to Popayan, and I said, I don't want to see the towns. Like, I, I've seen towns, you know, I want to go into the jungle. I want to go, like, here. So, they, so everyone I spoke to, including the cops and everybody, said, you cannot go east. You know, you can come down the coast and go into Ecuador, that's fine. But if you go east, you go to the jungles, then you're going to go into far territory. And that's when shit gets crazy, you know. That's when the kidnapping happened, and they, they grow all their cocaine and cocoa and all that stuff. Cocoa out there. So... Finally, I said, no, I'm going to try it. What's the point of uh, being here and not trying it? Um, not cocaine, I mean, trying to <laughs> <laughs> To be clear, to be clear. There's none of that happening. Uh, so, so um, yeah, you don't want to... <laughs> so, uh, so, 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 when I finally kept going down, I kept, uh, and then finally I, I mustered up the courage and I said, look, I'm here on an adventure, let's give it a shot. Let's go into the jungles, let's see the real country, you know, that's what we're here for. I think you guys will understand that, right? I mean, if you're riders and you're, you, want, you don't want to fly from Bombay to Chennai, that's why I rode here, right? Because I, I want to see the country.
so we went, we went through, uh, I mean, we means I went through, I went in, uh, and this is the last town where it's safe, right? And it, really cool place, like there are these little places, uh, you know, where you slept in there, uh, this little uh, Indian tents. And that's when Ariel says, now don't go further. Now, on the other side of the jungle is this desert called the Desert de Tatakoa, which is this. And I'm telling you, I'll show you a video later if there's enough time. This is the most incredible place I've ever been to. And I was so happy I did it. But when I was going through the jungle for two days, right, going through the jungles, uh, on day two, in the afternoon, right, so I, I go around the bend, it's all dirt track, it's all nonsense, and you know, it's all jungles. And in Colombia, there are cops all along the way on the highway, and if everything's good, they give you a thumbs up, you know, so there were no more, there, I mean, there was army all along, there was no more army, there was nothing. So I knew I was in like wild territory, and, and there's all jungle, and at one point I turned around, and right on top, I saw fires, must have been, I don't know, maybe a kilometer up the mountain on that side, right? Uh, to the south and I remember looking up and there were these guys sitting around a fire they all put their masks on and they all got up with their AK-47s I was like oh shit you know I was like shit my luck's, luck's run out I mean, this is day seven you know <laughs> day seven I was like oh my god I'm gonna get gunned, I'm gonna get gunned down I'm gonna get kidnapped what's gonna happen and everyone I spoke to gave me different advice tell them you're American don't tell them you're American tell them you're Indian don't tell them you're Indian tell them you're rich don't tell them you're rich it's like shit I don't know what to do you know, so, so I, I'm thinking about all of this, and I'm thinking about all the prayers my mother taught me, and I'm trying to recite all of them. And, I, and my bike is really loud, right? I put it on after, so you can hear it a mile away. So I just kept going as fast as I can. I didn't have the guts to look in my rearview mirror to see if they were doing anything. Uh, I saw them got up and move towards me, but uh, then I just kept going. I, I didn't stop, and you know, I, I was like this. And then I, later I was thinking, what? How stupid. It's not like they can't fight me. First, they oh, go on, kid, 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 kid. So, so I went like that. So I went like that, you know, for a while. And, and I think it was six hours before I stopped. I, I was so scared. And then it became night. And, and in, in Colombia, you're not allowed to ride at night. And if you ride, if you ride your motorcycle at night, you have to wear reflecting vests and all that stuff. So it was night and there's nothing around, I had to get to this desert. This was safe territory, but when you get there, uh, I mean, it takes a while to get there. And then when I finally got there, I was like, oh my god, you know, first I thought I was Superman. Uh, then I got there and I said, wow, this is incredible, it's so happy, it's so dark. And there was another, there, there, was, a, there was another couple who were on a bike. Uh, there was a guy from Holland and he was, he, his girlfriend from Colombia. And they had come down the eastern side. Uh, so I met them and I had like two beers in like two minutes. Uh, I relaxed a bit and then I met this Swiss, uh, Swedish woman, girl and this French guy who was cycling through all of America and then I felt like such a... <laughs> I was like, here I think I'm a king because I'm on a bike. Yeah, they're cycling, you know, like, come on, they were awesome. They were really nice people, we're still friends, but yeah, they cycled for a year and a half from Alaska down. So that's crazy, yeah, this is nothing, you just turn the throttle. Um, and this is the last, uh, last town in, in Colombia before I, I, I got into Ecuador. Uh, why I like this is, this isn't a canyon. The photo doesn't do it justice, but this is a deep canyon. There's huge like church coming out off the rock, fall, rock wall. You must have been there, right, Jay? Yeah. Uh, Ikea. What's it called? I forget the name. Yeah. I thought it was beautiful, and it's all gold inside, right? And one thing I realized about South America, and because of the Spanish, is what I liked about them is like every city, every town I got into, no matter how big or small, and I stayed away from the cities, you come into the center of town, there's a square, right? And, then, and you get to the square and there's a huge cathedral and this church, hospital, everything around that square. So I'd always go there and then from there figure out where I was gonna stay or not. And I thought that was nice. Okay, so we got into Ecuador. Uh, we, I got into Ecuador. Uh, that's my friend from college, Oscar, and I was, I was, he's from Ecuador, so I was really happy to see him there. Uh, it, now at Ecuador, I was at maybe two and a half thousand meters, right? Uh, Quito, it's about two and a half thousand meters. So I was getting higher in sea level, right? I think uh, Bogota was one and a half thousand. Uh, and this is called the center of the, the world, right? Because the equator passes through it. And, and you know what's interesting about this is that they actually got it wrong. So this, they, they had marked the center like uh, five, 500 meters down the road and then, you know, 20 years later, they're like, oh shit, we screwed up. Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> so they come back and they move it. Uh, so I thought, I thought that, was, that was quite funny. Uh, 
this was uh, coming down, you know, they, they had these uh, things carved into the mountain. I thought they were kind of cool. Uh, Ecuador, the best part about Ecuador is this valley called Vilcabamba. Okay, it's, it's called, it's basically, it's called the Valley of Eternal Life. I think it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to and there really is something in the water. When I went there and I went to uh, swim in, in the, the hostel I was staying in had a pool and I went to swim in there and I felt so refreshed, it was incredible. Uh, th this place, ev everyone that goes there, goes there to retire and they like, they never die. Like they live on much lo longer than they should. It's so beautiful, I can't tell you. If there's a place to go to, it's this. Uh, I love Formula One and somehow I found a Formula One fan who has a restaurant there so we went and watched Formula One together, the, the race. It was kind of cool. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go faster. This is now getting out of Ecuador. These were kind of the roads, the back roads that I would always take. It's really pretty because you had this, you know, gravel and then you had some really lush green. Uh, cops everywhere, like, you know, they'd stop not to, not to harass me but to take pictures with me. And then, you know, they, they, they see the Indian flag and then I tell them, you know, where you're from and I say, from India. And they say, oh, India. Wow, so beautiful. <laughs> and that made me feel really nice, you know? I mean, it was cool. So I have like hundreds of these pictures uh, with cops. I don't know why, not with girls, but it's awesome. <laughs> uh, so this is, uh, th this is the desert of Peru. Uh, I thought this was magical to me. I, I mean, I always dreamt about Lawrence of Arabia and deserts. And, and one day I will cross, this, cross uh, the Sahara on, on a motorcycle. Uh, but when you enter Peru, for the first two days it was just desert. And I'm riding down south, here's the Pacific Ocean, it comes white sand that goes on for miles. So I don't know where the beach ends and the desert starts, but the Pacific Ocean was blowing so hard that I was riding at a 45 degree angle like this. And it was really hard, but oof, it was, it was incredible. Uh, it was really beautiful. Local people of Peru, I think Peru is my second favorite country in, in South America. It was absolutely incredible. They're very colorful like us. These are the Inca tribes, right? So you've got the Spanish, then you've got the Incas, the, the traditional people. So now, now here's when I start seeing high altitudes, right? Here's when it gets in interesting. So I started going down and, and, and I crossed the Andes back and forth a few times, right? And this is one of the times I was crossing in, in uh, Peru. I don't know, did you get to Huaraz? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Huaraz was one of the awesome, nicest places I've been to. It's like a really mountaineering, trekking town. Uh, and I was staying in this place called the Way In, which is not Way In, it's the Way Out. That's it. It's like it's like one and a half hours from anything. Okay. And and it was such an awesome place. It's about four thousand three hundred meters. It's they call it way in. How is it way in? It's the way out of the way. Um, so it was it was this this two, these two English guys that were backpack this English couple that were backpacking. They met in Peru, fell in love. They bought the place after they were stoned one night. <laughs> Yeah, we all do that. Uh, so they bought this land and then they built this whole place like after, after you know, for over a period of years. Then, then they had a kid and then they split up and they still live together as well. Uh, but it's totally self-sustained. It's the most awesome place. And like I really like that they had this little uh, thing out front and they grew trout. They grew trout. So you'd go fishing, every night we'd have trout for dinner, I'd throw a net in, pull out like a bunch of fish. And I've never caught a fish before, so I was like, I'm finally going to catch a fish. We had pulled out like 10 fish and then the, the local guy is like hitting them to kill them. <laughs> anyway, there are lots of amazing treks out there. There was, uh, if anyone's seen the Paramount Mountain, you know Paramount logo, that mountain was right outside my window. It was incredible. Okay, so this is telling you that everywhere else is as messed up as us, okay? This, uh, this is in Peru. First you can say guys ass out there. Uh, this is a landslide. This is, this is a landslide. And basically, I, once I crossed the Andes, then I wanted to get to, uh, I want, I wanted to, get to the Amazon. And um, as I crossed it, I was getting to the Amazon. There was a long line, about five kilometers of trucks on either side, and then and it was a landslide. And everyone was standing there doing nothing, just giving VTs. You know, they're not doing anything. I said, "Screw it! I'm going to go through." Somehow I managed to go through. And I remember it was probably the scariest part. Like there was a small line this big, right? And I'm on it, and I had nothing to put my feet down here. And I'm holding onto the bus, but giving a little throttle and holding the bus and giving a little throttle. And that's the only thing that kept me up. Others, it was down. It was scary. That's the Amazon. Uh, it's really hate this river. Uh, I'll tell you why. So, I, you know, I wanted to be like Che Guevara and be the real experience. So I took this, um, what they call Henry. It makes it sound like grand. It's not grand, okay? Uh, this is how I slept. 
Okay, for five days. That was my that was my tenth. That was very sweet. Everyone, local fishermen. The only way you can get it in the deep deep Amazon, Iquitos. Uh, I don't know if you got there, but the only way you can get there is either by boat or by plane. Five days on this, nothing but uh, nothing but lie down in a hammock. I read Life of Pi. There, I was telling him, man, your life is better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> There was really, there was, there was nothing to do, but it was honestly, it was quite an incredible experience. I, I mean, I, I, I would never do it again, but it really taught me a lot about me. Like, look at that. Okay, I got to see stuff like I had no idea what this day, night. Like, there were just, there was chickens running around. Every day, the chickens got less and less and less because the guy would cut it, serve it to you, right? And five days, there's no water except for brown river water that comes out. And the best thing, this is the best part, right? They beat the Indians at this. There's a shit pot. There's Indian style there also, completely. Okay, so you take a dump if you need to, and right above you is a shower, so you can do both together. <laughs> <laughs> Complete two in one, right? So I couldn't do it because it's, I wasn't gonna have a bath in brown water, right? <laughs> it's just not happening. Uh, but eventually I did. So I got there, and when I got to the Akitos and I got deep in the Amazon, I said, I don't want anything to do with this anymore. <laughs> I'm done. And okay. I left my bike back there, five days down to Iquitos, and I took a 40 minute flight back, 14 minutes. <laughs> this is a bloody river I came down. Five days, 40 minute flight, shit. Taj Mahal was built 500 years ago, about maybe 700 years ago. So not, not, not too far apart, but you can't compare this. This is just rocks, right? And there you've got the Taj Mahal, which is like the ultimate in architecture and jewels. and the, So we were far ahead of any other civilization in, in creation and creating things at that time. This is just rocks and stones. But but going here, I'd never been to the Taj, and I, I went here and I felt these feelings. Then I went to the Taj, and while the Taj is amazing, I never felt anything. There was no energy. So here, there was this incredible energy, which which was uh, it was amazing. So that's that's what I that's Wanu Pichu. That's the top of Machu Picchu. So this is Machu Picchu at the top there, right? That's where the priests would go and slaughter people. Uh, but I was that that picture was there, me sitting out there. They only let 150 people in a day, so we luckily got there. This is Machu Picchu. This is the most incredible place. It's so beautiful to look at. I got here and I sat on this uh, the, this stone, uh, this um, you know this area to look down, and I opened my diary to write to write what I felt. Uh, and I wrote three words, and then I looked up, and then three hours later I looked down. You know, like I was just mesmerized for three hours. And, and as you can see, I can't stand still for more than two minutes. For three hours, it's amazing. So this is now on the way back. My, my poor friend Harish, we saw in the other thing, right? He, he, he's scared of heights. And we had gone at 4,000 meters this mountain pass. He sat behind me on the bike. When he said, boss, I'm going on the train, you come on the bike. <laughs> so this is on the way back from Machu Picchu. Now this is me crossing into Bolivia. Um, Bolivia is hands down the best country I've ever been to. It's the poorest, it's been raped completely, it's just incredible though. So crossing into Bolivia was, was amazing. That's uh, Pritha, she was my fiance then, now she's my wife. Uh, she flew in from, um, uh, she, she flew in from Delhi and somehow she, you know, took her five days but she eventually made it to me. This picture is her seeing Lama for the first time and uh, she was sitting at the back, she came for three weeks. Um, when when she, when, when this picture took, uh, was taken, just before that, I was in this place called Santa Cruz, and all my stuff was stolen. Uh, clothes, money, wallet, diary, passport, everything. Uh, I, again, had one shirt and one pant. Uh, so I was like, shit. Uh, and it was really weird because, um, I mean, this is a little, you know, in, uh, how, anyway, I'll tell you that later. But it all happened. And everything was stolen. I said, oh my god, I'm here with nothing. What am I going to do, you know? And that, that thought came into my head for like a second. And then it was out. And then it was just on the path of getting things right. And then I was just, you know, working with the embassy, working with the Indian embassy. Everybody I know reached out to help in some way. Three weeks later, I got a passport. I got, you know, some more money. And I was on my way. Picture you do I don't have out here is actually the picture of where I went before. Because uh, with the last of my money, I went to Liguera. Liguera is uh, it's up in the mountains in Bolivia, and it's where Che Guevara was killed. And the last bit of my money, I, I took a cab there, and uh, it was it was it was very touching for me to be there. Uh, it was a beautiful place. It was really awesome. But the, basically, the school where he was executed, everyone's gone. It's a museum, and everyone's written things. And what really touched me is that there were three people that wrote in Hindi before me. So it's like three of us Indians have been here and it's in the middle of nowhere, you know, and that made me feel good. Like we really get around us brown folk.
Um, now this is salt flats. This is the most incredible thing in the world, right? It's the size of Goa, it's flat, and it's just salt. We got on here, uh, that's Pritha. We got on there and we just kept going, you know, and on, we, we kept going. We said, we'll either get into Chile or we'll come back into, uh, into Bolivia. And three days, we just kept going. Nothing, 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 nothing. It's just freaking awesome. No, no road signs, no people, no things, no nothing. You know, once I remember, I saw one, it's a forerunner. You know, you see this big, shit. It's awesome. Um, so that's, uh, that's that's that. I'm gonna keep. This one of my best pictures. Uh, I think I look pretty cool in there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna keep going fast now because I got five minutes left. Uh, this is a, a volcano. Uh, there were a bunch of. It's an old volcano. A bunch of flamingos out there, and we camped out camped out underneath there. Uh, it was just. And this is at 4,000 meters above sea level, right? So that's about mm, 11,000 feet. So it's really high, and the sun really beats down on you. But it's the most incredible place I've been to. Sunrise there. That's when we finally got out. You see all of this? This is all salt. This is all salt on my bike. Just covered. My face was covered with salt. It, was, it, was, it burns. It was really hard. Uh, this is Bombay, Calcutta. You know, this is outside the salt flats in Bolivia. They had all these things, which is cool. This is the desert coming through. This is just crossing into the border of Argentina. It took me five hours to get in. Uh, the borders actually weren't that tough for me. I was very lucky. I somehow managed to sail through. Uh, half an hour at the most. Uh, South America was a piece of cake. But Argentina, because all my shit was stolen, my papers were stolen, uh, it took me five hours. Like I said, we were exchanging notes on an iPhone app. And uh, it was the iPhone 3. Uh, it was just relaxing in Argentina. So in Argentina, I really want to go see the Dakar. So we finally got to go see the, uh, I, you know, I want to take part in the Dakar one day, hopefully. Um, so this is on the way up to the Dakar. That's the Dakar rally. I'm telling you, I mean, seeing those guys, there's no way I can do it. They're incredible, right? And the beauty about the Dakar is you just go camp out, right, in the desert. We're camped out in the desert, and I'm, all these Argentinians were chatting with them, drinking wine. Then in the morning, I wake up with helicopters, and suddenly these guys are just going boom, right, right outside my tent, you know? My tent is right behind there. This is the only place that had barricades, otherwise it's just open. It's all desert. And they're going at 120 kilometers per hour, at least. And I can barely go 20 on sand. This guy got 120, yes. I don't know if I'll be able to do this. That's Pritha going completely sunburned. She put that up on Facebook, and I think everyone she knows, like, oh my god, what are you going to do? You're getting married, you're going to die. <laughs> so, that was quite funny. This is, this is Alta Gracia. This is where Che Guevara was. He wasn't born, but he lived there at the age of one. And he lived for, for some time. And they've converted his uh, house into a museum. That's the Norton that he took the motorcycle diaries on. That's the picture that I had with me all throughout. Uh, so I really enjoyed being there. This is Buenos Aires, one of the best cities I've ever been to. So awesome. It's so alive. People are just full of culture, energy. Like we're walking down, and just suddenly these guys just started playing, you know, just got a band together and started playing loud. Everyone knows that. Right? Uh, this is now, I think Pritha had left, and, I, and then once she left, I was pretty much done at that time. It was four months, I was tired. I don't know how he did 18 months. Like, you've got to have, he's absolutely right. You've got to be so nimble. My back was killing me, and my bike, it's like, it vibrates like crazy. So the, my shoulders were dead. I was dead tired. This is four months, right? And this is now going south to uh, Ushuaia, which is the end, right? Uh, this is one of the best places I've been. There it is, my tent. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I mean, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. I mean, my side is small, but the, but the garage is bigger. <laughs> it's so cool, I can't tell you. So I was camped out there. There you go, so penguins, this is, this is, the, they're so cool, by the way, they walk like, like humans, okay? There's like husband, wife, and baby behind, and they're walking like this, on the beach. It's like they're going for a stroll on the beach. This is uh, this little peninsula of Aldez, it was amazing. One, one, one beach was the penguins, one beach elephant seals, one beach sea lions, it was awesome. This blew my mind. This glacier, I'm sure you've been there. When I saw it, I just both started laughing, okay? This is, this is the most incredible thing in the world. This is now coming to Ushuaia. That's me at the end. Finally, uh, I've reached there where a KTM had. So original. Uh, my friend gave me a cigar in New York, so I took it all the way to the bottom, smoked it at the end. Then I put it on Indian flag. That's my bike when it reached Bombay, like one year later. I shipped it from Argentina, and that's my dad with it. So that's it. Thanks.